Hola, amigos. ¿Qué tal todo? I thought that we all needed a nice little break for the it's five o'clock here this Thursday because none of us can go on vacation. None of us can go to the beach. None of us can go anywhere. So I thought that I might whisk us off to more beautiful locales where the sun always shines and there's always a good drink to be had. So let's go to Cuba for a much needed DTO, a daiquiri timeout. So the daiquiri is one of those classic cocktails that has a history of its own. And it also has so many different interpretations. But for me, I like the simplest way to go. It has all the beautiful things that Cuba has to offer. It's got sugar. What do you make from sugar? Rum. We're gonna use light rum in this instance. And then this thing that gives us that beautiful kiss of tropicality, which is lime juice. It's an extremely simple drink, but it's wonderful. It first got its origins uh, in writing back in 1896 when it was named one of six essential cocktails, which I can't disagree because it is lovely. Now, Ernest Hemingway was said to at one point quaff down 15 frozen daiquiris, which to me sounds like A, the worst brain freeze, B, the worst hangover, and C, oh my gosh, that just takes up so much room in your stomach. It was Ernest Hemingway, so I guess, you know, larger than life person needed a larger life serving of frozen daiquiris. The, her the Hemingway daiquiri actually is of course a bit sweeter, so it's over the top. It's got grapefruit and maraschino liqueur in it. I like to go simple, so let's get started. We're gonna shake this sucker today because we're making an emulsification, because we have different densities of our ingredients. We have the rich simple syrup. Today I'm gonna use cane sugar, provided by my lovely friends at the Columbia Room. You can get actually a full daiquiri kit that comes with rum, limes and lime juice, and cane sugar. So go and give them some love too. So let's start out with our rum. We need to use a light rum or a white rum and we will start out with two ounces. Gotta make it count. And I'm so excited I finally got my Boston shaker. It's so nice. So two ounces. One and a half and half C's. Then we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. And again, this is gonna be about uh, either equivalent to or just a little less than um, a full lime. So, you know, it really depends on the lime. It depends on how long it's been in your fridge. You know who you are, Aaron. Sometimes there's that lime in the back of your fridge because you bought the thing from Costco, but now, you know, we're all stuck inside, so we're probably using everything up. So just make sure your limes are nice and juicy. Then we're gonna do, for me, um, we're gonna do uh, three quarters of an ounce of the Rich Simple Syrup, and this is cane sugar. Cane sugar, ah, well, hold on. Ah, come on, there you go. Ah. It's cane sugar, you can read it. You can use demerara, you can use even white sugar. It, you know, it's, it's, it's whatever you got right now because we're all stuck inside. Stay home, support your local restaurants and businesses by asking them to deliver or doing a contactless pickup. But remember, be a patriot, stay at home. Thanks, Andy. So yeah, three quarters of an ounce of rich simple syrup, two to one, sugar to water. Pretty simple, also pretty delicious. You know, the thing is though with this cocktail is that this has also been called the omelet of cocktails. If you guys have ever watched um, any movie really about uh, cooking, there's usually an omelet contest. Um, and an omelet, yes, it's that thing that you can make at a hotel breakfast bar that's got eight million different ingredients in it, but a true French omelet is an egg. Well, a few eggs. And it can be blissful it can melt in your mouth, it can be beautiful and pillowy and amazing, or it can be rubbery and awful and dry. There are so many ways to make it, and there truly can be an art of making it. And there can be many different variations, which are all right. There are purists, there are people who are like, just load me up with all this stuff. I'm looking at you, people who love the eight million different types of fruit in your frozen margarita, no shame. 
put some whipped cream on top, trust me. I mean, why not? We're all inside anyhow. Let's live it up, treat yourself. So, ice, let's go. So we're going to dump some ice in here and we are gonna shake this sucker. And we gonna really shake this sucker. So if you have a Boston shaker, I haven't demonstrated how to use a Boston shaker quite yet, but make sure that you get it on there and you get a nice good hold to it. And then we're gonna shake it. done. Moment of truth. Let's see if I can crack this sucker open on the first try. I'm so out of practice. Ah! Close enough. All right, so we're going to get our Hawthorne strainer out and we're going to strain this into a coop. If you don't have a coop, that's okay. Any receptacle that you can get it into your mouth and enjoy it is fine. Ignore my elf on the shelf band-aid. Now, isn't that a sight? You know, it's interesting about uh, the, the passage of the daiquiri from Cube all the way to the United States is that it has come through so many different iterations. So in uh, 1909, a Naval Admiral who was actually down in Cuba said, you know, I like this drink so much. He brought it to the Army Navy Club here in DC. And then throughout the 20th century, it came back in different forms. That's how we have the frozen daiquiri, the strawberry daiquiri, the frozen strawberry daiquiri, the mango daiquiri, the whatever daiquiri, the TGI Fridays daiquiri. It's a drink with so many different iterations and so many different personalities. It can be anything you want it to be, but I do like it simple. You can garnish it with either a lime twist or a lime wheel. I've got a lime wheel with me right now. Nice and thin. Cheers, folks. Stay safe, stay warm, and drink well. Oh, I'm transported already. It's almost better than vacation, except I'd like to be on a beach soon, my friends. <laughs>